Hi, this is Clayton from The Bug Factory. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up your meal one growing pod. I'm gonna be giving you setup guides, tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and what to feed your mealworms on to maximize your output. Let's get started. A little bit about me. I've been in the pet industry my whole life. I've sold wild bird food, poultry food, dog food, you name it. I've had pets ranging from reptiles to emus and chickens and dogs. So there's nothing I love more than pets and I'm really passionate about what I feed my pets and making sure that what I'm giving them is the best possible thing. Right, let's see what we've got in the box. Right, so inside every box, we've got three lids. Pair of tweezers. Three carbon filters. One green beetle tray. And three base units. Let's get rid of the box. And let's lay these out. Right, so the green beetle tray goes in any one of the white base units. And then we need to put the carbon filter into each one of the lids. There's an indentation on each lid, so you know exactly where to slide it in. The carbon filter passively removes smells from the mealworm tray, meaning that you should be able to keep the tray anywhere in the house without the worry of the smell of mealworms. Right, let's stack these up. Now the product's out, we're gonna to need to put some insects in there. We need to populate the beetle tray with beetles because the beetles will breed with each other and lay eggs for mealworms. But getting hold of beetles can be difficult, so we're gonna show you how to buy, take mealworms and turn them into beetles to populate your beetle tray. We recommend between 120 to 180 grams of mealworms uh, if you're a star colony, that's four to six ounces in Imperial. What we need to do, is take one of the trays which doesn't have the beetle tray in it and just put the mealworms into that tray. Once the mealworms are in the tray, we need to give them their food. Now you have to give them the dry food and you need to give them something for, for moisture. So in terms of dry food, we recommend you give them wheat, bran, oats, or in our case, we have a, a specially formulated diet, uh, which increases their pupation, but also their biomass. And then for the moisture, all you need to do is use some kind of fruit and veg waste. Now this can be cucumber, berries, potato. Uh, in this case, we're just using a few pieces of cucumber. Now it's important to top this up every couple of days, but also you need, don't need to use a lot because it's just for their water content. Once you've done that, once they're fed, put the lid back on and wait for them to start to pupate. After a couple of weeks, all your mealworms should start to pupate and turn into pupa. Pupa looks significantly different from mealworms. It doesn't move as much and they, they tend to wiggle a bit. What we need to do using our tweezers is just pick them up and pop them onto the raised part of the beetle tray. Then over the next week or two, the pupa will start to hatch into beetles and the beetles will climb down from the pupa tray, or from the pupa tray, into the actual beetle tray, and that's where they'll start breeding. After only a couple of weeks, you should start to notice that your tray looks something like this. 
the pupated pupa will have hatched into beetles and will be lining this tray. Within this tray there will be breeding and laying eggs with the eggs going through these holes into the tray below. So after only two or three weeks you should have sufficient eggs within this tray to move on to the next stage. Right, so after two or three weeks, the beetle tray will be fully populated. They'll have been breeding for a few weeks. The eggs will have been driving down through the holes, as you'll see here. You'll make sure you'll have fed them and the, the tray underneath will be nice and full of eggs. Um, one thing to be careful of is that there will be dead pupa and of dead beetles this is normal. Not not every not every beetle survives. Not every pupa will hatch out. Underneath, in the tray below, you'll notice that there is tiny little mealworms will have started to evolve at this stage. Some you won't see with the naked eye because there'll be like dots and other smaller ones. You'll see will be like tiny tiny mealworms. This is normal for the early stage and after a few weeks you should move it on. I say a few weeks but things can go faster or slower based on temperature and humidity. An ideal temperature would be sort of mid 20 Celsius to mid 70 Fahrenheit. Try not to let it go too cold because it will slow the development and when it's too hot, so over 30 degrees, over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it can also kill them and spun throat. So then, once this is done, you've fed them, move your beetle tray into your next empty tray for another few weeks. And then we'll start populating this next tray with eggs too. Okay, so after another couple of weeks, this tray is now also filled with eggs and it's time to move it to the last tray. So let's move that across. Now at this point we have a semi-mature tray, a immature tray, and your final egg laying tray. So within the, ne within the next few weeks, this will start to fill up with eggs, this will become semi-mature, and this will be ready for harvest. One of the really big benefits of our pods is that you can choose the mealworms based on the life stage of the mealworm that works best for you. Um, if, you have a, if you have a pet like a leopard gecko which prefers smaller mealworms, you can select those mealworms at that particular size and because the eggs are laid daily, you'll always have that size of mealworm available through your pod. So now we have a fully mature tray of mealworms. You can tell it's fully mature because you'll notice some of the mealworms will be starting to pupate. We want to transfer those pupa across to the beetle tray. And that's actually a good thing because you will lose some beetles through death over time. And so with each tray, you want to try and move across a few dozen pupated mealworms just to replenish your beetle stock. So in terms of temperature, the ideal temperature is around mid 20 Celsius, late 70s Fahrenheit. But room temperature is absolutely fine. Um, the only, if it gets too cold, they will go into hibernation. And if it gets too hot, it can kill them. So it's worth just keeping an eye, just to make sure that you don't put them outside. Or if it's super hot outside, it's in an environment which is kept around room temperature. So, mealworms can be pretty smelly, and anyone who's ever grown mealworms can tell you this. Which is why in every tray, we've put in the plate with a carbon filter. These carbon filters passively absorb the smells, and over time, their pores will gradually become blocked up with different particles from the mealworm tray. Their life can be extended by just washing them under a warm, warm water tap, once every month to six weeks, just to extend the life. Eventually though, it will become less and less effective 
but we do sell replacement filters which you can buy either from our website or from one of our partners. So it's important that you always top up your beetle population because beetles will only live for a maximum of a few months. They can live less. So on every, every tray of mealworms you produce, always make sure you just keep a few dozen, transfer them across when they're pupated, just to keep that beetle poly, poly nice and healthy because more beetles means more eggs and means more mealworms. If you allow them to dwindle, your, the amount of mealworms you'll get every time will get less and less. So if you are going on holiday for a while and you will be away and you won't be able to feed them for a couple of weeks, it's okay. What you can do is you can put your mealworms into a container and place them into the fridge. The fridge's temperature level will send them into a hibernation so that they'll literally go into a deep sleep until you come back. So if you go on our website at bugfactory.co.uk, we've got plenty more tips and tricks for you. We've got loads of blogs on how you can enrich your pet's life with our mealworm pods and through producing your own mealworms. We're always there on social media, so send us a message if you have any questions at all. Someone will always get back to you. We really hope you love using our products as much as we've loved making it and getting it to you. Have a great time. <laughs>